Hey everybody, so I don't know if you know what this is. It's actually a magnetic chuck or a magnetic work holder and it's used in a whole range of industries for holding a piece of work still while you perform some vicious operations on it like milling or grinding or drilling or whatever it is. And it's used in a whole range of industries including just holding tools in place. Now how it works is one thing, why it works is another. The reason why it works is because magnets have a very peculiar property to them. If you hold magnets like that and try to pull them apart in that direction, well, they're incredibly strong. But if you want to pull them apart by sliding them apart, the force required to do that slide is much, much lower than the force required, <laughs> the force required to pull them apart. It takes a lot of effort in that direction and hardly any in that direction. So with things like magnetic chucks, all you have to do is push a lever, and not that strongly, to turn the magnets on and have that incredible gripping force to hold something down. Now, mostly they use a set of permanent magnets where they slide a special bed over the magnets, and that special bed forces the magnetic path to go in and out of the bed. And of course, when it's sticking out of the bed, it can grip the workpiece, and when it's in the bed, it can't grip the workpiece and so it has an on and an off position. How they work? Well, they work on a property of magnets called reluctance. Magnetic reluctance is just like electrical resistance. Electrical current will flow down the path of least resistance. A magnet will take the path of least reluctance. So in the air, there's a great deal of reluctance for the air to take the magnetic flux. If I get a bit of steel, the reluctance in the steel is very much lower and so the magnetic flux is directed into the steel. This is something that's used all the time in things like alternators for bending magnetic fields in crab claws. But that property, the following the path of least reluctance, is what's utilised in magnetic chucks. And the same idea is used in switch reluctance motors. So far we've talked about magnetic chucks or magnetic switching, which is the same thing really, using permanent magnets where you either slide the plate or slide the magnets to change the flux path so you can take advantage of that. But there is another type where you don't need to slide anything and this is called the electro-permanent magnetic clutch or magnetic chuck or magnetic switch. <laughs> Pays your money, takes your choices. What that uses is a property of hard and soft magnets. Hard magnets so where they're magnetised and it takes a lot to demagnetise them. A soft magnet will demagnetise relatively quickly and an example of a soft magnet would be something like Alnico. So Alnico can have its magnetism changed by applying a current to a coil that can swap it between north and south. And this is used to create something called the electro-permanent magnet switch and that can be used in a magnetic chuck, of course, where you don't have any moving magnets. You have the magnet arrangement of the Alnico in one position. You pulse it with the current and it changes its position. Because of that change in position, the flux can be lifted in and out of the bed plate to operate as a switch or a chuck. There is, of course, another option, and that's the um, electric magnet. And you see lots of YouTubers doing things with transformers where they basically use a transformer as an electromagnet magnet to create a magnetic choke. Now that's not really a great idea because if there's any failure, if you lose power to it of course, then you lose its chuck holding capability and you have metal flying across the workshop. The benefit of permanent or electro permanent is once you've made that physical or that pulse it stays in that orientation and so if power is lost it doesn't matter, the chuck will keep holding irrespective. Now these things are stunningly easy to make actually. If you want to make a perfect one of course you need perfect materials but if you want to make one that's going to work pretty well from household materials it's actually stunningly easy. So here's a set of magnets, they're one centimetre by a half a centimetre near Dimium M35 magnets and you'll notice when they arrive there's a stack of five here and a stack of five there. They have the north here, the south here, the north here and the south here and you might notice these, these are called keepers. 
What you do with those is pop them on there and that contains the flux in that arrangement. So there is no flux going outside because it's been contained. It helps the magnets over long periods of time not demagnetize. But the minute I do that, then the flux is no longer contained and now it's out there, it can pick things up or do the stuff that magnets love to do. So essentially, that's all there is to this job. We just have to give it a flux path to contain the magnet or take the flux path away to decontain the magnet and the magnetic flux will come out because that's the path of least reluctance. So we have it there, the path of least reluctance is through the metal. If we have it there, the path of least reluctance actually is a bit more outside and so we get magnetic attraction and essentially that's all switching magnets are about. There's nothing else to it. You have to give them a path where the flux can follow the least re reluctance and then arrange it so you can change that path to where the least reluctance is now outside and it's as simple as twisting a bit of metal on the top and you do find people doing all kinds of things with this and there's some great research on this because as I mentioned earlier that curious phenomena of it being easier to slide than it is to pull means that these things are being used for things like climbing robots for example and I think there must be other uses for that because that is a really curious property of them that the force required to do that is much less than the force required. I can't do it. The force required to do that. Astonishing. Anyway, we need to arrange these. Now we're going to use some everyday home materials. I've got the magnets as I've just said and what we'll get here is an M12 bolt and of course it's a hex. So if I arrange those on that hex like that, so we've got one here and one here, and I do that with six of them, I'll make a ring of those. If I make a ring of those, then I'll be able to switch the flux. Of course, what I need to do is make something that'll hold that in a ring, and of course, I've turned to Tinkercad and drawn this up. All this is, is a plate where we can put the M12 nuts, and then between those M12 nut spacers is a little bit of a circle where I can force one of my magnets. So I take the magnet, and we'll need six of them. And you press into that portion there. So the magnet is now held there. But of course it's got the north here and the south here. And I need to vary those. So south needs to go to south. So this would have to be the opposite way around. Then the opposite, then the opposite. So we have three pointing south-north and three pointing north-south. When we put those into place, then we can put these nuts into the nut-shaped holes. Now everything's a tight fit as it must be, so you need to persuade that in with a gentle persuader. And you make two of those. And by the magic of camera, we have two of them. And you can see they're identical. So we've got six nuts here and six magnets, so you need 12 in total. And they're arranged so that the north and the north are pointing both at each other. And then again, the south and the south are pointing both at each other. And what that means is that that nut is not containing the flux in that path of least reluctance. There's still flux coming out because the south and south are hitting each other. And what it means is if I take a nut, it's gonna to stick to it because the magnetic flux is coming out and we have a force of attraction. But if I take a second one and I take a bit of bar, a bit of eight mil bar, we pop through the center there and then we pop that on, it will automatically line itself up where the flux is completely contained in those two flux paths. Because at 60 degrees apart, we have a north and a south facing each other. We have a flux path on the inside and everything is contained. So if I try to stick that to there, nothing happens because there's no flux coming out. Because the flux is going around the flux path that we've provided for it, that is the path of least reluctance. However, if I turn that 60 degrees, there we go, and all of a sudden, that's now attracted. And that's because that simple twist was just like we did with the keeper, and the flux is now being forced outside of that flux path, because now the path of least reluctance is outside of the flux path. Unless I twist it, and the nut drops off, and that is how magnetic switches work.
Now, of course, I've put this pattern up on um, Thingiverse for anybody who's interested in it and wants to replicate this or use this. And it is very bare and it's meant to be very bare because you might want to do a whole host of things with that because that is a magnetic switch. So you could do lots of different things with this. You might want to put a handle on it, for example. You might want to be able to drive it in a different way. You might want to attach it to something different. So I've made a very bare one so you can adapt it more easily to what you might want to do with it. It. but those are the fundamentals of flux switching there's a straightforward flux switch for you to copy if you want and to put into whatever projects you happen to be working on i hope you enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe